Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you right now thanking you for your love, your grace, your mercy, and all who you are, God. There is none like you, God, and we just want to rejoice in that. Uh, we thank you for the gift of your son. We thank you for the sacrifice of his life. And Lord, we just want to give you the glory you deserve. And be with us as we read your word today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Okay, good morning. It is nice and lovely outside. It's warm. I'm so happy that it's warm because last week it was negative 42. So this is awesome to be 32 degrees. It feels hot now. Okay, so listen, we're going to look at the Christmas story. We're going to talk about it some and we're going to see the goodness of God in it. So I'm going to go to Luke, the book of or the gospel of Luke. I'm going to be starting at chapter two, um, verse one. And it says this, In those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first uh, registration when Canarius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judah, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out of the field, keeping watch over the flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, peace among those with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them, from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see the thing that, that, that has happened. When the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that it had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen and had been told to them. At the end of the eight days when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel, because he was conceived in the womb. All right, so that is the traditional Christmas story. And uh, the other Gospels record three wise men, or not three wise men, or just wise men coming in and giving gifts to the Savior, to God the King. And so one of the things that you want to look at is everyone had to go back to their hometown where they were from. Everybody had to do that. That was common. Caesar wanted to know how many people he had. And the reason you did this is because you were boast about it. I got this many people. So someone else will come try to attack you. You will say, listen, I've got an army of over 10,000 people. Because the way it worked out was you gave Caesar your loyalty. So if he wants you to fight in the war, guess what you did? You fought in the war. So that was common to get a census of the people. So you can brag about it. So if anyone will try to come against you, the first thing you will let them know is, I have over 10,000 people at my disposal to fight against you. Right? So that, that was common. So Joseph knew that's what he was going to do. Now, Traditionally, you know, the guy was probably poor. Joseph and Mary are probably teenagers. They were probably 16, 14, 15, something around there. They were young people, right? And so Mary is pregnant and has got to ride on a donkey. Now, listen, I don't know who's ever been pregnant in here. I haven't. But if you have, you know that pregnancy isn't easy. It's hard. It's difficult. So you have to imagine Mary sitting on a donkey being pregnant. They finally make to their destination. Mary's water broke. Things get a little bit chaotic. They come to an inn, right? And they're going there. Now, when you go to an inn in the Hebrew, in the Jewish culture, Joseph went to people he knew. He, he didn't go to like a hotel. He didn't go to a motel. He went to people that he knew and he asked them, do you have space? And their response to him was, no, we don't have space in the inn. Matter of fact, we're, we're, we're packed, man. I'm sorry. But in the manger is where you can go. Now, if you grew up on a farm and you ever had to walk into the barn, you know it's not the best place to be, right? The smell is atrocious. It smells horrible. 
there are animals in there. Some of them you can't see at night, but you can hear them. There are creepy things moving around. There are spiders. There's probably rats. And that's why you get, you know, barn cats to kill all the rats and mice. Right? It's a whole bunch of stuff going on inside that manger. And so she has to give birth to this child inside this. I mean, that's, I mean, that's crazy. Right? If you went to the hospital and they said, listen, we don't have any room in any of the, the operation rooms, but the janitor's closet is great. I mean, you can go in there and have your baby. Right? You would sue them and you would probably win. But they had no choice, so they had to give birth. So she's laying on hay, and he, she gives birth. There's no, you know, and, and all they have is cloth. They can't put him in a nice little baby outfit, make him nice and pretty. They have to put him in cloth and just keep him warm because it's night. And in, in the mid, over in Africa, in the Middle East, it's cold at night. It's not hot. It is cold. So they have to wrap this baby up in as many cloths as they can to keep him warm so he can make it through, so he can live. So they put him in the cloths, and then they sit down, and then they're settled. Joseph delivered a baby. That's pretty awesome. Now, me and dads can say, hey, I delivered my own child, right? But Joseph delivered the Son of God. He delivered Jesus. So they're sitting there, and then Luke takes us to a different part that's going on right now. There are shepherds in the field tending their flock. Now, this was a common thing. Shepherds tend the flock, and you got to tend them at night, because guess what happens at night? Wolves come out. Coyotes may come out. They want to get your sheep. So the shepherds have to stay awake and alert. And they're looking for the wolves. They're waiting for the wolves. They're waiting to fight off. Because what you would do is, as a shepherd in, in that culture, you would take your sheep and they would graze. And then you will find this luscious green grass and you will let them sleep on it, eat on it so they can rest. But somebody's got to stay awake to watch for the wolves. So the shepherds aren't expecting any good thing to come tonight. They're prepared to fight. They're ready. And out of nowhere, an angel comes. Now listen, anytime you read in the Bible and an angel appears, nobody's like, oh man, that's awesome. It's an angel, right? Um, if back in the day, if you listen to the Rat Pack, I know you did it because you're holy. But if you listen to Frank Sinatra and he walked in the room, you've been like, oh, it's Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin and Sammy Davis and everybody else is coming. Even Peter's coming in. And, and Joey, you get excited. Right. And so this angel appears. But in, in the Old Testament, when it, you didn't have that kind of reaction, anytime you saw an angel, it meant that something bad was about to happen. So they were scared. They were frightened. And they bowed and they were they were they didn't know what to do. But I love the angels reply. No, no, no. Don't fear. No need to fear. Because this day in the city of David, a savior who is Christ the Lord is born to you. Now, he gives Jesus three titles, Christ, Savior and Lord. Right. The, the first thing he says is Savior. Now, you got to understand, God didn't necessarily save us from our sins. A lot of people talk, well, he saved me from my sins. He freed me from my sins. What God saved us from through Jesus Christ was the wrath of God. Right. Because you sin, you're worthy of hell. And that means you get God's wrath. But Jesus came and he saved us from God's wrath. Now, the only way he can save us from God's wrath is he has to be the Christ. The Christ meant the chosen one, the one God chose to let his wrath fall upon him. Isaiah 53, the suffering servant. We were bruised. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, chastisement of our peace was upon him. That is what he took upon himself. And it pleased God to do this. So God pleased and had pleasure in letting his wrath fall upon Christ to save us. And he says he's Lord. That means because of the redemptive work that he is going to do for the world, that the Lord, that God himself is going to give him dominion, power, and authority over all. That in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Because he was the Christ. He is the Savior. Now listen, we wouldn't get that necessarily. But these, these shepherds who were Jewish, they got it instantly. Because they've been waiting for this. They've been waiting for this good news. Can, have you ever been expecting bad news? And you know it's going to happen? You know it's just a matter of time? 
but then all of a sudden someone comes out with good news and you just, you just all you can do is rejoice. Right? So remember, they were waiting for wolves. And instead, they got the greatest message of all time. The one they've been waiting for. The one that they've heard about their whole life. The one that they've longed for to set them free. The one they long for to, to give them a joy that is irreplaceable. The one is here. He is born. The mission has begun. He is Christ. He is Savior. And He is Lord. And the angels, even at the mission of this, all they can say is glory to God in the highest. In other words, give honor unto God. The highest honor belongs to him on earth. Peace among those with whom he is pleased. Now, traditionally, we like to, you know, kind of do the uh, other version. We say glory to God in the highest and peace on earth. But we, we forget to, to put in with those whom he is pleased. Now, who is he pleased with? Those who will follow him. He is pleased because they have faith in him. They trust that Jesus is the Christ. They trust that he was chosen by God to save us from God's wrath. And they submit and bow to him as Lord. He finds pleasure in that. It doesn't mean you're perfect. Listen, Christ has made us perfect by the things he has done. But while we're on this earth, we're walking in that. We're trying to walk this thing out and learn more of him and grow to be more like him. So we have been perfected because of what he did. But we still walk in this thing called sanctification where we're trying to, to be more and more Christ-like. That's why all things work together for our good. Because Christ died for us and that is the good that's worked out. And now this thing of present our bodies as a living sacrifice. Now it's a sanctification process we're working through. But isn't it good to know that he's pleased with you? And if he's pleased with you, then you have peace with God. Listen, I don't know about you, the world is chaotic. Sometimes I don't want to watch the news anymore because they misinform you sometimes as well. But I see all the tragedy, all the hurt, all the, all, and my hope still has to be in Christ and I'm at peace the world can be as chaotic as it chooses to be. Jesus even talks about in Luke how chaotic the world would be when, before he returns. However, I have peace with God. So though this world is chaotic, though my body is chaotic at times, I have peace with God and he is pleased with me because he's my, my savior. He saved me from wrath that I deserved. He is my Christ. He is the chosen one. He is the chosen one by God to take upon all my just punishment. And I bow to him as my Lord. And I can think of no greater Christmas present than that. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you right now thanking you for who you are, God. There is none like you, nor will there ever be any like you. You are Christ. You are the Savior. You are the Lord. And God, we give you the honor for, for sacrificing your son for yourself, ultimately, who so you sacrifice on our behalf because you loved us. And it was for your glory, God. So we give you the honor that has deserved your name for what you have done. We give you the praise. And just like the shepherds went and rejoiced and told everyone they saw, Lord, we return and rejoice and tell everyone of this good news. And we thank you that we're at peace with you and that you are pleased with us because of what your son has done. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Love you guys. Love you. I will see you soon. So I know you got a dinner or a lunch that you're getting to. Enjoy it. Eat some for me. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. All right. Love you guys. Love you too. Yes, you will see me next year. <laughs> okay, thanks for coming. Thank you.